where you want it. Bay 12, please. Hello there, Transformers fans, and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review. I gotta say, when they first pipelined that they were doing a bludgeon figure for Legacy Evolution, this is definitely not what I was expecting. It's not even what I was hoping for, but I do really like this figure. I want to preface this review with I really like this figure, even though much like with the Nova Prime, I don't really get what they were pulling from. I mean, we have a better idea of what they were pulling from with this figure than we do with Nova, but it's still kind of interesting. Today we are reviewing the new Transformers Legacy Evolution comic universe bludgeon. <laughs> Gotta get the air quotes in there because, uh, yeah, this, uh, again, it's cool, but I've read a lot of Transformer comics. I haven't read every single Transformer comic, although I'm really really close. I've, I'm quickly reaching the point to where I've read every single comic ever printed for Transformers and I've almost watched every single episode produced for Transformers. I am quickly running out of Transformer content that I haven't either read or viewed and as awesome as that is to achieve it's also like oh man I'm running out of new stuff to experience. <laughs> Anyway, here he is in the packaging. He does look really awesome. This figure is a good figure. It's definitely a good bludgeon figure for sure. You've got some artwork there of him in tank mode on the front. On the side, you've got both a close-up and a good far out image of this awesome take on bludgeon. Legacy Evolution banner artwork on that side. On the back, you've got both him in his robot mode, his tank mode. You get to see him with his accessories. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. And here is Bludgeon out of the packaging. The comic book universe take on Bludgeon, if you will. Here's the thing. At no point in any of the comics, at least once again, not that I've read and I've done my best to look even through comics I hadn't read yet, and not only IDW and Dreamwave, but the original Marvel comics as well. And I can tell you with utmost confidence that there is not a single appearance, panel, whatever, where Bludgeon appeared and he looked like this. Now, has he appeared where he is a orange, red, green tank with a samurai helmet and a skull face? Absolutely, 100% without a doubt, yes. Did he look exactly like this in any of those appearances? Uh-uh. This is a great bludgeon figure. This was a fantastic choice to make a bludgeon figure, but labeling it as a comic book universe take on bludgeon, unless they're just trying to say this is a G1 eyes version, in which case, Kinda, okay, I guess, maybe, sure, but my point is, he didn't look like this. Now, here is the concept art that I found that people have talked about also, where we can kinda see where they got this bludgeon, but even while you're looking at that, the differences are very, very significant. I have, however, seen somewhere, I can't remember who did it, I'll have to double check, but there is a third party upgrade kit that somebody made that gets this figure really close to that concept art design, but even that concept art design, Bludgeon didn't really appear that way in the comics, at least not that I can recall. So, is he a great Bludgeon figure? Absolutely. Is he based off of the comics? Not really. <laughs> For comparison, here he is next to the Legacy Evolution IDW Comic Universe Tarn, which is a very fantastic figure. Both of these are very fantastic figures. And I do not blame, nor am I upset that Hasbro remolded this into a bludgeon figure because it was a very good choice to change this guy into a bludgeon figure. 
He is fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Fully articulated shoulders. Upper biceps, single jointed elbows, wrist joints, fingers open and close, although they're all connected together. So you can't individually articulate them, but you can move them all together. Waist, hips, upper thigh, single jointed knees, forward and back on the ankles and side to side as well. The turret on his back articulates, which you can also move to his arm, but Bludgeon doesn't really carry a fusion cannon, let alone a double fusion cannon on his arm. So I kind of like seeing the cannons on his back personally. And he comes with this really awesome sword. I really like this sword mold. It looks very good. And that's pretty much it for articulation. I also really like the head sculpt a lot. Again, I love this figure a lot. My only complaint is the fact that Hasbro claims that it's based off of source material that it's not actually based off of. That's my only true issue with it. Now, as much as I do really like this figure, and this is a great bludgeon figure, when they announced this figure, I was kind of hoping they were going to take the approach like they did with the other pretenders that they modernized, like Iguana, Skullgren, and Bomburst, for example. Now, in spirit, it is kind of like that. What I mean by that statement is I wish he looked more like his G1 design where he had more samurai parts and he was more orange like his original G1 design. This is definitely not my favorite modern take on Bludgeon either. I definitely prefer the Revenge of the Fallen 2009 release as Bludgeon because it's still such a good design and the tank looks a little bit more like his original G1 toy than this one does in tank mode. And yes, I know that's because this is based on a comic book appearance that he didn't have. But like I said, I do still really like it a lot. Bludgeon's one of my favorite Decepticon commanders of all time. He's no Megatron, but he's definitely up towards the top for me as a really cool Decepticon character. Transformation for Bludgeon is very simple and straightforward. It is just like with the Tarn figure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by removing his sword. We're gonna go ahead and take off his tank barrel pack. And it's nice that this already came untapped because we were about to do that next anyway. Rotate this bit around, rotate these antennas into barrels for the front of his tank mode. Next, we're going to untab this chest section and pull on these shoulder sections. And then we're going to rotate these shoulders like so on these inner treads here. Rotate this upper plate here forward and also rotate the head back into his torso as far as we can get it. There we go. Sometimes the horns like to get caught, so it, it's best if you try and get the head at an angle a little bit, and then it'll go all the way up into the full position it needs to be in. And then you can just bring this piece down and secure that into place. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the legs. We're going to tab those legs together. We're gonna bring those feet forward. And then not on this knee joint, but on this knee joint right here, we're going to untab that section like so. And it's okay if the knees come undone, you can just re-tab those together. There's a couple of pegs right here. Those are gonna tab into the bottom of the feet and secure those sections into place like so. And then you can just go ahead and take the tank barrels. There's these two tabs right here. They're gonna tab right there onto what was the shins of the robot mode and secure those legs together just a little bit further. And now you have his big tank barrels on the top of the tank mode. All that's left to do next is the arms. We're going to rotate that section back, rotate this section like so, and then there's a tab right here that's gonna tab into there, and a little tab right here that's going to tab right here under this little lip, and what you wanna do is you wanna bring that elbow in, tab that in, while also looping it under that leg, and that's gonna secure that arm section. All that's left to do to finish this rear tread is to untab that, untab that, bring that all the way back. It's going to tab into the side of the forearm and then just loop that other piece on the bottom and that's gonna tab in to the bottom like so. Do the same thing over here, bring that back, rotate that, 
bring it up, loop it in while you tab that in. Bring that down, untab that. Bring that in, tab that underneath. And then one last step I like to do, just like I did with the Tarn figure, is rotate those fists all the way around. So on the top, it's just smooth and you don't see robot mode fingers just kind of hanging out right here like you do on this. And then you can kind of store the sword on him. There's plenty of pegs to put it on the figure. There's not really any super great places to peg it on to where it doesn't look like a tank with just a sword chilling on the side of it. So I kind of like to put it here on the side of his leg where it's pointing kind of forward and but doesn't look horribly out of place. I mean, there, there's no way to store his weapon on him without it looking like a tank just chilling with the sword. Not that this is like an earth mode tank and he's trying to be a robot in disguise or anything like that. But still, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of strange and out of place. It would have been nice if they had added like a peg hole or some kind of clip spot underneath the tank mode for the sword to sit on there since we still don't have any actual wheels or moving treads to roll him on anyway. So it's not like it would have hindered his alt mode movement whatsoever. For comparison, here he is next to Tarn. So you can see them side by side and see how they compare in their tank modes as well. And they both look really great in their tank modes. In the tank mode, there's virtually no physical feature difference to how they look other than the color scheme because the only thing they really changed mold wise to go from Tarn to Bludgeon was the head sculpt and they added the sword. That was it. Those were the only physical changes they actually made to the mold. Not that they really needed to drastically change this anymore for what they were going for. If it truly is based off of the concept art we think it's based off of, then yeah, they definitely needed to change it more. But much like with how I felt about Nova Prime, I kind of want to know what comic they're basing this bludgeon off of because that's not how he appeared in the comics. Once again, not to sound like a broken record, but yeah, he, he didn't look like this in the comics. As cool as that would have been. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's review featuring the new Transformers Legacy Evolution comic book universe bludgeon here. This is a great bludgeon figure. Once again, I just want to be very clear on that. I really, really like this figure a lot. It is a fantastic take on one of my favorite Decepticon commanders. However, I don't like the label because, once again, he didn't look like this. He didn't have this body style at any point in any of the comics I've ever seen or read with anything named Transformers. That's just me personally. If somebody can show me in the comments, that would be great. Somehow, I doubt that's going to happen. Once again, we, we did discuss that he seems to be loosely based off of some concept art that didn't really make it into the comic, but... Is it a cool design? 100% absolutely. Is it a cool figure? Most definitely. It's just not really accurate to anything. And there's nothing wrong with that. We just don't need to label it as such. Just Legacy Evolution Bludgeon would have been totally fine. We just didn't need to add the extra bit of, it's comic book universe. Why? Because we said so. I mean... Sure, I guess. So if you're looking for a good bludgeon figure, this is definitely a good and very cool bludgeon figure. Stay tuned for more Transformers reviews. Like and subscribe. Follow us on social media. Check out some of our other content here on Bay 12. And check out our sister website, CoolToyReview.com. And like and subscribe to the Cool Toy Review YouTube channel. There's all kinds of awesome toy news, reviews, and more on Cool Toy Review. If you like Star Wars content, check out RebelScum.com, the world's largest and oldest Star Wars fan website, not owned by Disney. 
And if you're looking for some awesome action figures and merch, come by our physical location inside Order 66 Multiverse in the shops at Willow Bend Mall in Plano, Texas, which also houses Order 66 Toys, the world's official all-collectible Star Wars toy store. And in case you're not local, they go live every single Friday night at 7 p.m. Central Time on the Order 66 Toys Facebook page, and they ship all around the world. Check out CollectorsOracle.com, our free archival website, where you can also manage and put things in your collection as well as want list things that aren't in your collection. While we don't have any Transformers listed on there yet, we are adding more brands and other cool items all the time. And there's always a chance that Transformers will be added in the future. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. Game over, man. Game over.